Hey guys, sorry, Paige is staring at me and I got distracted and I didn't realize you were sitting on a black screen. I blame her. She was making a silly face. She's also wearing a blanket like, like a cool... I don't know what that is. You do kind of look like Vincent Valentine. Cool dude in the chat, starting strong. Wooly is a crazy person for liking Miriam's Wacky Tower. Fun fact, I was not aware of this. Uh, you guys saw me do it on stream, and then you saw Wooly do it on stream. There was a nerf in between those two events. I'm not sure the details, but I saw at least 10 to 15 people talking about how that encounter actually got like modified slightly. So what I'm saying is it's a shame that Wooly didn't get to Miriam or Radon back when they were launch difficulty because, you know, they were harder before. <laughs> Radon was harder before. Am I saying the right character's name? I can't even tell anymore. You might have noticed that I'm sleepy. It's true. There's only one person to blame for that. Me. But that's not who I'm going to blame. I'm going to blame the piggy. It was the piggy's fault. It was him. He woke me up early to go pee. And I couldn't go back to sleep. So it's his fault. That's how it happened. Gippy. You want your toy? You want your bone? Whatever. My dog lost his neck, I know. It's sad. We lost it in the war. Boo-hoo. A boo-hoo. So we're going to be playing Norco today. People are asking, what's Norco? And the answer is, I barely know. Let's read the description. Norco is a southern gothic point-and-click narrative adventure that immerses the player in the sinking suburbs and verdant industrial swamps. Of a distorted South Louisiana. I was originally like kind of interested in it because one, it has a robot in it. And two, uh, it won some kind of award at the trifecta, trifecta movie thing. Tribeca? Who the fuck is Becca? And why isn't she trying hard enough? She should stay after school and do remedial quests, qu classes. Oh, it's all good today. Oh, it's all good. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all good shit today. I'm using my full power. Tribeca D's nuts? What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. All right. There was an attempt? No. No, there wasn't. Also, I don't know what's going on. But I, I missed a bunch of people last night. Why are you barking? Why, why is your, why? Why are you barking and your mouth is a quivering and your jowls are flopping?
Oh, I think he saw a squirrel. I think the dog saw a squirrel. He's hungry? No, I fed him. I just fed him. Just now. I fed him. He's, he's not well. He's still hungry. But still. But still. So there's like some donations and stuff from last night that like I don't remember seeing, but I might have read in like a like a stupor. But I definitely didn't read this one. A thousand bits came in from Punished Furby. Pat, I watched your YouTubes and, and stuff like a bunch ten years ago in high school. Happy to see you are well and apparently being milked. Oh, bro, the Epic kicked in 666 bits. Thank you, sir. The stream is sponsored by the Devil For Real. That'd be nice. Kids are down with the devil. Kids love the devil. Oh, no. What if I just fell asleep? What if... What happened? What if I, what I, no, they don't ban you for sleeping anymore. I'm just like, what if I fell asleep and just started farting like nonstop? Shut up, shut up! I will not. Anywho. I'm gonna thank Big Coffee for subbing. Thanks, Big Coffee. Hey, Pat. I just got a mysterious message on Twitter from an account called Mysterious Elder who told me that I was the chosen one. It's their only message since 2014 when th where they say darkness is rising and we need to fight it. I'll probably get isekai soon. Best of luck to you and everyone in the chat. I'll go fight darkness and hopefully try to come back later when the final FF7 R game drops to enjoy it all in one go. Take care. Oh. Well, good luck with that. I wish you the best. I don't know if you guys have this experience, but do you ever have like... Just legitimately, completely crazy people DM you. Every now and then, like, my DM message will light up, and I'll be like, oh, I wonder what it is today. And I'll click on it, and it's, like, message 1,000 of a guy trying to, c like, convince me that, like, Ronald Reagan is his secret father because of the aliens. And I'm like, hmm... Mm. Cool. Cool. That was me? No, it wasn't, Kagan. No, it wasn't. Dr. Pudgy Pudgy sub to say he uh, hello. Or Harrow? I'm not sure. But hello, welcome. King Jester sub, thanks, man. Hacks Manatron sub to say yay. Thank you. Derek Gura kicked in a sub to say wah, 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 wah. Thanks, Derek. Eichmann uh, uh, said, you didn't sub. I don't know why I said that. Fuck my brain. Hey. Did I miss something? I thought you were doing more Ghostwire Tokyo. Yeah, I changed my mind. That's what you missed. I was like, eh. and then I changed it. And then it was done. No one can stop me. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, pardon. 
Is Pat short for Peter? What the fuck kind of question is that? <laughs> what the? Uh, yes. What the? No, he's asked if it's short for Peter. Like, that's not even. Oh. What? Well, I mean, there's a bunch of names that have. No. <laughs> Thanks, Paige. Do it. Yes, you did. You brought the dog over here, then he wanted that, and then now it spelled it. Thank you, Paige. Paige convinced the dog to spill my drink. She convinced him. And this is, this is why. Oh, fuck. Oh my god, you just dropped all the paper towels on the floor, didn't you? Yeah, here. Eh. Don't blame the dog? I didn't. I would never. Uh, humans always get blamed first in this house. Uh, here. Eh. What, what is this for? To also block, in case that is too much. No, it's fine. Luckily it's sugar free, so it doesn't get sticky. This couch sucks. Is that, oh, is that why cum is so sticky? Because it's got lots of sugar in it? Shut up. That, I, I wouldn't know, Pat. Now give me. I wouldn't know because I'm pure. Give me that. Gross. It's like a Coke that comes out your dick. In your dreams. Yeah, I'd probably make a lot of money if it was just Coca-Cola. Funny, you'd go around your dick? Well, hey, Paige, if I could, if, if, if you were, if you were, if people were like... Gosh, I sure need a refreshing Coca-Cola, and I could be like, yeah, give me a second. Only a second. <laughs> well, I'd have to get my, I'd have to get, I'd have to get my efficiency up for production quotas. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was like a self-burn, Pat. Horse Coke because it's flat? Shut up. Shut up. I thought that was a typo. I just spilled the Red Bull on myself now. It's okay. It's sugar-free. That's why I won't get sticky. Like, if I spilled, like, a, a bunch of cum on myself, then it would get sticky, and that'd be awkward. You spill cum on yourself. Are you carrying around a bat? A vat? No, that would be silly. Thank you. Why did you wipe that on your gra- uh, uh, Here you are. Here you go. You can have it. This is my present to you. That awkward moment when you spill your bucket of cum everywhere. Yeah, see, scrumbo time knows what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, cum comes in bags out here. Uh, oh no. Oh, oh, it's one of those days. Oh, it's one of those days. What if, what if the Queen of England? Why did I think this was going to be a good thing to say? Why did... Why? My brain actually thought, you know it would be a funny thing to say? What if the Queen of England died by falling into a big pile of cum? That's it. That's the whole thought. That's the whole, that's the whole thing. That's it. That's all I got. What if? <laughs> what? <laughs> what if? She was like.
She said it. So she's on the. She's on the floor, right? And she's. <laughs> she's on the floor and it's. And it's. It's like checkerboard. And somebody goes. Hey, watch out. She can move in any direction. And. And then. Somebody's like, did you say any erection? And then there's a big pile of cum on the floor. And then the queen falls in it. And right before she falls in it, like it's quicksand. She's like, oh, I do wish I had my corgis to drag me out of this pile of cum. Somebody just messaged me. I'm going to imagine they messaged me to shut up. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was pretty dead on. These vibes is off, man. Hey, Galactic Fanto and Raging Inferno sub. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Hey, Genocidal Cupcake kicked in a sub. Thanks, Genocidal Cupcake. Wow, 19 months. Bag milk is still an abomination. Buying an extra container. You know what's easier? A goddamn jug. Love you, fam. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, probably. See, here's the thing. I don't defend milk in bags, or at least I try not to, because it is silly. But I'm routinely confused by others' confusion. It's simple. You just put the bag in the jug. Like a bullet. Do unread sub messages from a past stream carry over to the next one? Yep. That's why I read your thing, Big Coffee. But I think if you just showed up, you totally missed it. So just scroll back like 10 minutes. And, and before all the cum stuff. You know how it is. Hey, Diadem sub. Thanks, Diadem. Appreciate it. An Octo Tasty sub. Hello, Orb Man. Hello, Chad. Have a nice day. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm having a good day. I don't think, like... Hey, let me... Hey. So somebody in the chat was like, Dude, the Queen of England is dead. And I'm like, yeah. All the better to make fun of her... St stupid dead body and I'm just thinking like you know you know you know you know how people are like don't don't speak ill of the dead cause it's like rude or whatever like I can understand like if somebody was like otherwise chill and you were like, oh man, you know, it drove me crazy how they'd eat with their mouth open. Or, you know, it's fucking, you know, trivial baby shit. Right? That's like, what are you, what are you doing? Right? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's just, that's just rude. That's just impolite. Right? But, but then if it's like, yo, that dude, that dude's a murderer. Fuck that bitch. People are like, oh no, don't it's it's ill the day. Oh my god. Nah. Nah, fuck him. You know? That's what I think. I remember when I worked at the grocery store. This guy that hated my guts, hated my guts, hated me so much, and I hated him back. Just 
very did not like each other at all. And he passed away. And people unironically asked if I was going to go to the funeral. And I was like, no, fuck that prick. I'm glad he's dead. They were like, oh. I'm like, what? I'm supposed to pretend we were friends? He's an asshole. I can't believe you would say that. I'm like, like, go to hell. Go to hell. I'm sure there's people out there that hate my guts. And when I die, they'll be like, man, fuck Pat. Pat's stupid. And I'll be like, hell yeah. Also, I'm in a ghost in this situation. And then I haunt them. And it's fucking sick. Fucking haunt the shit out of them. Big haunt. I'm loving it. Hey, Coffee Abomination Sub. Thanks, Coffee. Hey, Pat. An equally tired person. It's okay. I'm also using full power to exist. I wish you great luck with your stream. I appreciate the minor typos in that. Thank you. You know, it's funny. I took the dog out for a nice walk. It was very pleasant. And I was, like, nice and energized. And it was, like, like 640. And I'm like, yeah, I feel good. I feel relaxed. And then I started to feel really relaxed. And then at 651, Paige was like, you know, it's like 650, right? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Hey, Green Caps kicked in a sub. Thanks, Green Caps. Whoa, wait, 10 months wild. Anyway, pet babies and keep orbiting it up. Will do. As always. As big always. Don't, don't you worry. Or a bor oh god, or a bor bor bor. How do I say this? A Roborowski subbed. Good to see Adventure Games getting some love. Wait, this is an adventure game? Ah oh, man, hero subbed and so did Catherine. Thanks, guys. Jacato kicked us up. Hey, man. Did you see it? Did you hear recent scientists found out cat brain might have gotten smaller because of domestication? They don't need to think as much. Yeah, I'd believe that. Yeah, I'd believe that real easy. Yeah, I'd believe that. Hey, Mask and Michael kicked in 500 bits. Thanks, man. How do Canadians feel about the CSIS? Because if the events of turning red happened in the U.S., you know the FBI would be at Mays in a heartbeat. Mask of Michael, I don't know what that acronym is. What is the CSIS? It's our FBI CIA. The FBI equivalent is the RCMP. Which is why I'm getting so thrown off by the FBI mention. Canadian Security and Intelligence Service? Wow, they're doing a great job. I didn't even know about them. That was a secret. So who's NCIS? Well, there's there's Je there's Gibbs and Abby and Ducky and uh, the nerd and the, the other guy and the lady... From, uh, uh, I forget. 
There's Gibbs and Abby and Ducky. That's all that needs to happen. Hey, Tiz86 gifted us up. Thanks, Tiz. Appreciate it. Vex to list subbed. Thank you, Vex. Hey, Pat, I usually try and educate people on the non-binary, agendered, and such, but when my cousin asked about Testament's gender after watching both the English and Japanese trailer, I went, who cares? They're hot. And it's been my default ever since. The Testament thing is fairly interesting because if I remember correctly, the... Uh, actual Japanese they used implied that Testament has, quote, ascended past gender, end quote. Which is actually pretty cool and close to who cares they're hot. Right? Like, that's... That's like, eh, eh, whatever. Now, who cares they're hot is like, uh, is cool. Um, except for ugly people. Um, so that's a bummer. But, um, being ugly is its own separate curse that has nothing to do with gender. The genu the genuine way that I like because I, I it's one of those things like who cares they're hot is like one of those interesting things that it works for this particular issue, but other people say it about other things, and it's like I think what really matters whether or not you're talking about gender issues or disability issues or psychological issues, uh, or or representation or any of that thing is like no matter no matter if you are the most confusingly gender identityed. Uh, incredibly poorly represented, uh, highly disabled minority conceivable, uh, there's absolutely nothing that can, like, rob you of your internalized, like, uh, what's the word? Like, internal human value that is unique to yourself regardless of any qualifier. Intrinsic! That's what I wanted to say. And more specifically, the idea of, like, your value as a person being a representation of both your exterior appearance and your level of productivity and happiness able to be caused to others as, like, some kind of equation, it's weird. It's weird. I don't like it. So, like, unless you're an asshole, you're cool. That's really, yeah, yeah. It, and Testament's weird in that respect. Because didn't Testament used to be a villain? And then all the stuff they wanted to be a villain about stopped existing? So they're de facto not a villain anymore because they don't, like, all their goals are either met or unmet and can't be met. They're still a gear. I assume they're still a gear. You don't stop being a gear. Like, Dizzy's wings didn't fall off. You've done, you done throwing your tantrum? Paige's doing chores upstairs, so she locked the boy down here with me, and he just threw a righteous tantrum over at the stairs. Just, no. You're stuck with me, bro. Uh, Judacious kicked in. So the weirdos who think people are only supposed to be in relationships with somebody who is equally as attractive as each other? So fun fact, there's a principle called the, um, um, Oh, God. Uh, what the fuck's it called? Freud invented it. It was the similar and attractiveness principle or something like that. That people tend to 
aim towards people of their representative and relative attractiveness. Um, and you can easily extrapolate that into people who are very attractive, feel confident in approaching people who are very attractive, and vice versa, etc. So people tend to end up dating those who are approximately their same level of generalized attractiveness according to societal norms. Um, and when that does not happen, uh, people get upset because they get stuck in the trap of uh, viewing like attractiveness as the be-all, end-all of uh, physical attraction or even mental attraction or relationship. So you get into the situation in which like, I don't know, maybe you're dating a very pretty redhead who is really smart and funny and maybe made of glass, uh, but you're very short, and that is typically not that highly valued in society. But you can make them laugh. To which I go back to... Uh, uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? What do you see in that guy? He makes me laugh. Also, Paige is way into short guys. So, I mean, kind of, kind of just fell into that one. Lucky me. <laughs> uh, all right. Regardless, uh, uh, we're going to play a video game. But before we go through, uh, nobody can remove your intrinsic human value but you by being an asshole. So feel free to ignore any particular labels or confusion about those labels as you wish. How how I do video game. Ooh, I didn't even categorize these? I'm an idiot. I have to put these in the work folder. Oopsie. Pat, you're a good guy. Shut up, Josh! You don't know me. I'll fight you. Moving on. Where the fuck did I put Norco? Oh no. Oh no. Uh My Steam thing is is getting real real difficult to fucking navigate. There it is, I found it. Oop. I did Oh, I'm still big pat. Oopsie. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Okay, careful. There's a seizure warning and a suicide warning. Depictions of suicide are actually fairly common. However, like in, in games and media. Uh, but I, I advise you to probably take the seizure warning uh, more seriously, particularly if you're watching at home. I'm going to hit this button, and I'm going to go here, and I, I like this spacious, I like it spacious. And then you can change, oh there's a dyslexic, uh, a dyslexic uh, text. You know, it's funny, I only recently found out that the reason why people with dyslexia have difficult reading in two dimensions is because they see letters in third dimensions, and in 3D space, flipped letters look the same. That's fucking weird, man. I had no idea it was so complex. My old, my dad's old friend Steve 
he had the 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 dyslexia and uh the way that uh they handled that was they said what are you fucking stupid steve and then the nun would hit him with a stick so uh so it's nice to see that How'd that work? Like shit! How do you think? <laughs> We're in Norco, Louisiana. Shield hit the stars from beyond halogen and flame projected onto the sky every night. Do I click something? Is that what I'm supposed to do? There was no such thing as silence. The noise never went away. The refinery exhaled an endless sigh. Oh, I see. Trying to think. This is actually. I could never sleep. It was so loud. In your dreams, the towers were grand cathedrals, places of worship. The swamps hid behind mirrors like spies. The birds transformed into radiant spheres and traced omens above the bright blight. Sorry, the highway blight. You spent your adolescence sleepwalking between little devastating rituals. Though Blake pleaded, you decided to leave. So it's one of those things, I, uh, I remember True Detective Season 1 came out. Um, and I had to look up that the vistas they were using existed in reality. Because the, the poorer parts of southern Louisiana look like a nightmare. Like, like, def defied my sense of belief. I didn't care. But for a while, you did. You caught out on a grainer to Chicago and onward to the West Coast. You'd never left Louisiana and thought you'd never return. You thought the ghosts of the lowlands wouldn't find you hiding along the road. The years carried you through overlit suburbs of the vast American limbo, across mountains, about uh, above cell, above blah 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 blah, blah, blah cell towers. Thumbing down 99, you saw an old man crouched in a roadside ditch. He was mouthing your name. He had a familiar gaze. He was gone when you wiped the sleep from your eyes. He you spoke to Blake, learning of your mother's declining health, her insomnia, her erratic behavior. You ignore the urgency in your brother's voice. By and by, you made your way east. You threw your phone to the Rio Grande. You joined the armies of the Mesa? For months, you were in the company of fugitives. You slept in nuclear tunnels, repairing engines and weaponry. The war was a meme that set Albuquerque on fire. You escaped while foot soldiers of a pop-up junta bloodied the parched land. While hiding in the berth of a freight liner, I slept. You slept easily as the truck shuttled through the plains. You called home from a landline in a motel somewhere beyond Texas. You knew from Blake's hello that your mother was already dead. You hung up, shouldered your bag, and returned to the highway. Five years as it passed, the ghosts were calling you back home. Lowland ghosts, huh? You wake from a delirious dream to find yourself in your childhood bedroom. Monkey watches you from the corner. Let's look at the mind map. That's a nightmare. You. Are home again. Because your brother needs you. Because your mom died. 
you were traveling. Across the Rockies. Your friends went south and you were glad to be alone. You spent long nights along those highways in a shitty sleeping bag. You bathed in rivers, you watched the ocean of the outer space. You watched the satellites travel their course. The freight cars rattled into the cold dust as you crouched on the grainer porch. The cell towers peeked over the flat country, translating the notions of the world. The lights of suburban Memphis, the fences, the traffic, the stark shadows under a lavender blanket of clouds. Afraid, tired, silent, and alert at every terminal, you watched the night decay for miles. Then what? You rode in the back of a van wedged between amplifiers, from Chicago to Des Moines. You stole a heater from a Walmart and brought it to the poorly attended house show. Des Moines to Kansas City, Kansas City to Denver. And then down the Pacific Coast. Summer days arrived. You built a bike in a garage in Eureka and took it south. Generator shows on the beach, interstate on-ramps teeming with personalities. The familiar smile on the face of the old man of the Central Valley Ditch. That smile burned its image into your eyes. Finish thought. Blake, your brother, is oblivious. Your grandma once said that she didn't expect much from Blake. She said he was short-tempered, oblivious, and couldn't focus. Blake was sitting in the chair across from her, staring down at a tablet. After she left the room, you asked him how he felt. I feel fine, he said. Why? Because of what Gran said, you responded. He looked confused. What'd she say? Your brother... That's... I love it. I've seen that. That's... that's... that's peach saliva. Oh man, Paige is such a bitch. Huh? What? You talking about me? Just talking about how much I love you, babe. Oh. Your brother's a lot. Younger, reckless, gets in trouble, spends sleepless nights scrolling image boards. An edgelord, a shitlord, a sensitive soul, compassionate, foolish, can't take criticism, always needs money, tries to help those he loves, but often makes things worse. What else? Insecure, dysmorphic, constantly checking his reflection, always seeking validation, was terrified of you leaving, and now he's terrified of you dying. He needs to get over it. You're all the family he's got. Your brother will be dismissed. Your mom died. The cancer metastasized. It was her liver, then her lungs, then her brain. She was on chemo, never finished the third course. At the hospice on Jefferson Highway, Blake said the traffic shook the building. He left before she drew her last breath. Alone with the morphine drip and the rattling glass. That's how Catherine died. Your mom. Oh, that's depressing. The smile of the man who crouched in the ditch of the highway revisits your mind. His head was smudged with Wednesday ashes and mascara ran from his eyes. Out of the mind map. Let's talk to Monkey. You know what I like about this game as a point and click? Highlighting. Highlighting is important. Monkey, your best friend, a childhood gift. You spoke with him often when things got difficult. But then you left, and he sat here for five years collecting dust. Five years. His eyes are filled with anger as he challenges you to return his gaze. Staring contest part one, glyphs. Glyphs will appear in flash. Match the pattern to meet monkey's gaze. Ready? Yes. You successfully met his gaze with cool assurance. However, his expression is unchanged. You stare more intensely. Rings. Circles will appear over monkey's eyes. An outer ring will shrink to the perimeter of the circle. Click the circle when it locks into place. Ready? What? Your stairs don't match for monkeys. Uh oh. I d what? Oh, I see. What the? Uh, the dog is freaking out. 
Zangief. Zangief. He is like snarling at the television. Anger makes melts from his face. Take monkey. Okay, when the monkey came towards me, the dog shook the couch with, with the furious anger. Bubba, hey, doo doo. It's okay. It's okay. Look, did you want your phone? Did you see like me shake? When Monkey came at me, he does not like it. Monkey stare at you. You stare at Monkey. Keep staring. He stares with more intensity until his gaze passes through you. You become invisible. Keep staring. Little circles of light pool in the doll's tired eyes as they watch the infinite space beyond your being. The air that hangs between your eyes and his is a vacuum of utter stillness. You look away. Yeah, no, when that monkey shows up on the screen, Zangie starts growling and snarling. Hey, Paige! You wanna come see something funny? A sticker from grade school, half peeled from the window. I'm, I'm, I'm getting Peach Saliva down here to check this shit out. Dog is upset. Behold his stillness. All right. How does he recognize a cartoon monkey? Yeah, you know what? I can turn off dog filter for this. Give me a second. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I find it. And... Okay. Zangief! No, 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 no. No, no. No, 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 no. Like, he hates it! Like, he hates it! He hates it so much! Alright, we're now back to the dog filter. What's up, babe? Oh. I'm gonna look at plants. You assume Million has been keeping the plants alive. Thank you, darling. Books. Among the books on the shelf is a slim volume called Crisis LARPing. The proto-disaster tourism almost began, began almost as soon as the floodwaters left. Punks from across the country ventured into the Ninth Ward, gently, St. Bernard, finally the East. They curated a theatrical self-portrait of their lives in the ruins. The aesthetics of disaster were central to the emerging milieu. It began to percolate in a popular, popular culture. Collapse became the zeitgeist. Wise investors recuperated the experience of the disaster. New Orleans became a plastic dystopia, a marketplace for crisis. Well, that sounds like the worst thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. Computer. The laptop your parade gifted to you idols on a shoddy particle board desk. As the screen illuminates, you notice that the signal in the house is dead. No internet. Looks like Blake was using the computer at some point. He left a browser tab open. Eat cash fast and install quack job. Use promo code bleed3 for up to 0 .005 quack coin. What kind of a name is quack job? Just like it sounds, full of lunatics. Apps way of getting you to join a cult. Worse than the people living in the mall in Kenner. You can't trade that coin they use hardly in exchange because everyone knows it's a goddamn Ponzi scheme. Mods won't do a thing about shills, but they'll ban you on the spot for using a naughty word. Place is a joke. Clear nets on them with celeb libs and bots. Seeing this exact thing, OP. Still there? Seeing the base of the upper suction. Oh, I can actually scroll up. Get some sleep. In a glass. We've all seen the sun. Swamp acting weird. See that shit every day. Funny, talk to somebody else. Seeing through. That's the sun, you idiot!
That's the sun. Ooh. How's that look for you guys? It looks good to me, but I don't know how Twitch's shit is doing. It looks nice. I'm gonna keep it. It looks like a surveillance camera. That's not... That's what... That's what TVs used to... <sighs> A flyer from a show your friend put on a few weeks before you left town. A fight broke out while one of the opening bands played. I got whipped in the face with a bike chain. You still have a scar above your left eye. After the show, you and Blake got shot fireworks on the roof of the hotel on Poyser Street. Sleepless and sober, the two of you walked back to Norco. You watched the sun climb over the grain elevators. Living room. Your mom's unfolded laundry. Family photo album. Yellowing pages of disposable photographs. Your grandfather. A peculiar look in his face, impossible to read. Your mom's staring at Blake through the obscure lighting. He's dressed as a vampire, tugging at someone's waist. Pleated khaki shorts. A photo labeled Duck. Scene of a barbecue. On the lakefront, the man at the center points playfully at the camera. His face is obscured. Turn the page and there's blue, your dad. But you've never thought of him that way. His skin stained by the sun, a canister of dip shoved into his front pocket. His easy smile, his knowing eyes. You set the book aside. I got a new mind palace. An old friend of your mom's. Your memory of him is scattered and vague. Blue is a vague memory. You don't remember Blue. The only things he left behind. Photographs, cologne, tools, the name that your mother kept. Even the pictures that have survived are too faded to make out. Your grandpa, Peter Pops Pierre Melancon. He passed away when you were a teenager. He seemed to court controversy. Though as a child, you never understood why. Memories of sleepless nights. The dull refinery hum in the red halogen half-darkness. Your mom's sitting here, staring through the window. There was tension in her demeanor, as if you were interrupting some urgent and obligatory task. You continued to the kitchen with no words exchanged. I thought she hated me. She was thinking about Blue. She barely knew you were there. Heat spring, heat of spring will soon arrive, and the mildewed air of the window unit will fill up the room. A photo of your mom holding Blake as a baby on the, beach, on the beach in Pensacola, Florida. It's winter. You stand beside them, bundled up and laughing as a gust of wind rakes the beach. The sky is, the sky is bone white. A letter from Shield Oil sits atop a stack of mail. Dear neighbor, please be advised. There will be elevated flaring at the side of our number five stack near Good Hope on the evening of Thursday, March 19th. This will pose no health risk to residents. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Shield Norco Office of Community Engagement. Can't deal with anything with Jesus. An old defective flat screen that your mom never bothered to bring to the curb. You turn on the TV. The chaotic distortion of your mother's memory slashed before you. Okay. Is that the kitchen? Good Christian home, I've noticed. You're always frightened by the laundry room. And that's it. You've discovered so many dead cockroaches in this microwave over the years that it's discouraged you from using it. For several months, a dead baby roach was stuck, stuck between the clock's display and protective stream, blocking the hour. Blake finally shook the microwave aggressively enough that the roach fell into the guts of the machine.
Your mom's painkillers are spilled across the counter. Even this music is very old-fashioned. Into the attic. There used to be much more clutter up here. You imagine your mom gave it away as the end approached. We're in the backyard. This truck was your grandpa's. You remember riding in his lap while he let you steer. The dead wasp that collected behind the seat. The smell of grease, whiskey, and nicotine. You and Blake would drive the truck into New Orleans on the weekends. No AC, windows down. Rattling chassis was deafening going 75 on Interstate 10. Millions been slowly repairing the vehicle since your mom's death. Steel pry bar lies on the ground. Mom's old four cylinders, 350cc bike is as extensive wear and tear. Disintegrating crab net. Lou taught your mom how to make these, and your mom taught you. In the summers, you'd bike to the suction before sunrise. The chicken necks to the bottom ring of your neck. Submerge it. Sorry, tie chicken necks. Sit there nursing your coffee while the swamp raised its voice. You'd come home with a dozen or so crabs snapping and writhing in a burlap bag. You assume your mom hadn't been out on the water much this past year. Million sits in her characteristic slouch, lost in thought. Her carapace has taken on the rusted and weather-worn quality of the rest of the machinery in the yard. You recall the night that your mom showed up with her. You and Blake stayed up past dawn, poring over pirated API docks. Her ragdoll mass was slumped on the floor as you wrote her rooting procedure. You wondered if such memories hide behind her constellation of eyes. The robot regards you casually. Okay, you're awake. Couldn't sleep. Catherine used to say the sound of the refinery gave you restless sleep. In any case, I'm certain I was no help. She gestures towards the motorcycle at the edge of the carport. I was tuning, turning over the engine on the bike to test the coils. It was pretty noisy, but they're in good shape. All we need now is a fuse, and we can use it to get around while I finish repairing the truck. I heard the phone ringing inside, but I had my hands full. Are you expecting a call? Many people have been calling since Catherine died. Your brother's usually the one to answer the phone, but I don't know where he went off to. He's useless. I give Blake a hard time, but he did more to care for your mother during her dying final days than anyone else. It's been difficult for him. He deserves some time away from the house. So where can we get a fuse? Gas station just up the road, Asm, but you may have to persuade Troy to let you in. Why would so many people be calling? Your mother left behind a lot of loose ends. From a little I know, I gather she was conducting research for a client in Fat City. She says that many people would like to acquire that data. I'm unaware of where she's hidden it. Perhaps Blake knows where its whereabouts. Who exactly would want to see this data? Your mother spent her entire life researching this town. She knew histories that others have forgotten. History has a lot of value in this place. So, who's this client? Having a clue. These aren't things she discussed with me. As the cancer spread, she became more guarded with the research. It did take her knowledge for granted. Your mother had a lot to teach, but she wasn't always the easiest person to get along with. So anyway. That's all. Thanks, Million. The towers of the refinery wink in a subtle and familiar rhythm. To the front yard. Your grandfather's statue of the Virgin Mary sits in the shadows along the crawl space of the house. You observe the weathered concrete and flaking paint of the statue. The face is especially deteriorated, framed by a system of cracks. You run your hands along the deteriorating contours of the statue. It snaps off as if by design. On the statue's face lies an odd assemblage of electronics airlessly soldered together. At the center of the electronics is what appears to be a card reader. I see. Three times this house been flooded. First flood. It's a shadow of a memory. Placing your feet down on a drenched carpet. Your mom and grandpa ripping out sheetrock. 
sitting in a small RV in the backyard, setting dolls on a cluttered table. Second flood. You're 14. Pumping station failed during a heavy rain. You're in class watching the clouds move up river. Got a text from your mom. Stay in Destrehound. I'll come get you. For two weeks, you shared a hotel room with your mom and Blake. Spent all her days gutting the house. In the evening, you'd sometimes help. That third flood, though. Another pump failure. Your mom hired contractors with the insurance money. Said she was getting too old for it. You were bitter. You blamed her for not selling the house sooner. Stayed with friends in New Orleans. The fourth flood will follow a slow hurricane. And it'll be a calamity. It'll leave the entire region submerged. As critical levees breach, there'll be a massive blackout the last for weeks. Much of the sewerage infrastructure will be damaged beyond repair. The embattled federal government will do nothing to assist. It'll bankrupt the region. Small melaton enclaves will form along the high ground of the Mississippi River. They'll take to piracy and hijack commercial shipping vessels. Pirate, private mercenary forces will retaliate in kind. Slowly, industry will flee this hot zone. The old river control structure will collapse from neglect and sabotage. The Mississippi River will again change its course. Norco, an old abandoned refinery town on a ghost of a river. Your house will be squatted and then raised. This writing's really good. Three crows eye you from the power line. A snowball stand is closed for the winter. How do private investigators? We snoop for you. The turtle, he crawled out of a trash can. Don't touch him, see, he's dirty. No, he's not. Turtles are always clean. They live in what? Oh my god. Trash water's not clean. We gotta go, see. Just let me stare a little longer. He's pretty. Two sisters are continuing to argue over the turtle that crawled out of the trash. Lights are on a Padu private. You knock, no answer. Let's hit the Floodgate Tavern. Million was security android. She guarded the perimeter of the aluminum refinery in Gramercy. One day she ran away. Why? You don't know. Million, uh... Your mom was conducting research. But for who? For a client, Fat City. Your mom, uh... Your mom was conducting research for client Fat City. That's all you really know. Shield is an oil refinery. Shield Gulf South is a regional subsidiary of a transnational oil empire. It holds a large share of leases in the Gulf of Mexico and refines crude oil right here in Norco. The chemical annex sits on the other side of town from the refinery. It produces the feedstock for plastic consumer products. Bead stock for plastic? Shield owns half the town. Floodgate Tavern. Many shield workers gather here after the shifts. It's closed. Should be open later in the evening. This is fascinating to me. When I was very little, I grew up in a very poor city industrial neighborhood. But granted, it was a very poor city industrial neighborhood in Montreal. Uh, it really feels like city poor and rural poor are two different planets.
the dime's discount. Beatstock is just raw materials? Okay. Freight loaders being repaired in the Batur woods over the levee. A film crew set up alongside the river road. Several floodlights illuminate a gruesome murder scene. Two men stand pensively above a corpse. As you near the set, a small energetic man jumps from his chair. Attention, dumbass! Can't you see we're trying to shoot here? What are you filming? It's a detective drama called None of Your Goddamn Business, True Detective. Any other questions? Sounds cool. Is this like a murder? Keep it up and it's going to be. Hey. You know what? Wait a second. Wait a second. You from around here? Yeah. You use some cultural expertise, you might say. Filming a Bayou cop drama and all these knuckleheads are from L.A. Actor on set turns the door to the director. I told you, Kevin, I'm from Texas. Oh, that's right, Noah, I forgot. Your Harvard-educated daddy bought a boutique ranch outside of Austin. Well, that don't make you a cowboy, hoss. Now hush up before you scare off the yokel. Director returns his attention to you with a mild look of disgust. Help us out, will you? The script needs some work. What do you say? Fine. Great. Hey, Noah, get over here so you can learn something from this stupid redneck. Actor smolders. He whispers under his breath. I'm a redneck. Fine, Noah, you're a redneck. Real salt of the earth kind of guy. But as luck would have it, we came across an even dumpier hayseed than you, okay? So just take a knee. Alright, anyway, we need some good slang. What do you call a villain? A bad apple? A lowlife? Oh, obviously a crawfish devil. Crawfish devil? You nod solemnly. Wow. Now that's some spicy Louisiana shit right there. You get that, Noah? Write that shit down. Crawfish devil. Damn, that's good. That's sultry. Who says that? Nobody says that. No one at Juilliard says it, Noah. We're down here in the muck. I've been hearing all kinds of people say it down here. It just slipped my mind. Great, that's settled. One more thing. What's more regional way of saying to murder? To kill? I actually really like this one. A lot. Slather him with the oyster-flavored peanut butter? Oyster-flavored peanut butter. You maintain severe eye contact. Jesus, that's vile. That's repulsive. Just like this fucking place. I absolutely love it. Noah! Yeah. Slather him with the oyster-flavored peanut butter, got it? Yeah. Well, I'm satisfied. Crawfish devil. Slathered up another poor bastard with the oyster-flavored penis but penis butter. That's right. Sends a shiver down my spine. Seriously, have to repeat this? This is how real people speak, Noah. It's how people talk outside Silver Lake, you understand? Real people are out here saying weird, gross shit all the time. So memorize that line, because that line is going to win me a Golden Globe. Oh. Director half remembers your presence. Pretty good at sourcing talent, aren't I? I always had a knack for it. Guess I owe you one. If you ever need anything, talk to Noah or somebody else on set. Just don't bother me. I'm busy. I get lost. So many evenings spent watching traffic pi pass by this gas station. Little's changed. Neighboring business still sits abandoned. Surrounding streets are still quiet and empty. Well, well, well. Look who's back. What happened? Carnival forget you beside the road? You even brought your little doll. That's cute. Wow, Troy. You look like shit. Not even gonna start with you. How come the rest of your family so chill, but you so uptight? My mom just died. Thanks. You're not that stupid, are you? Catherine, she's too valuable. They'd never let her die. If anything, she's probably vacationing on a hard drive somewhere. You're trolling me about my dead mom? Trolling? You're so damn sensitive. Can't say nothing around you. 
mom was excavating all along the rim of the lake. She used to pay me to help from time to time, matter of fact. Needed somebody smart, somebody vigilant, somebody like me, especially with shields snooping around. Seen some wild shit out in them swamps of Catherine. What kind of shit, huh? Won't bother telling you about it, might hurt your brain. Anyhow, this ain't story time. Not letting you in this gas station. Goddamn company runs this dump, did me dirty. They swam me with an ATM machine for speaking truth. Ain't let nobody through till I get an apology, very least. You clearly deserved it. Go huff some glue. You really want to get through, go get me some of them pills your brother was selling. That might, might persuade me. <laughs> you joking, right? You trying to get wrecked? All right, then let's go. Hey, or mon- what the- M Monkey? Oh, I see. I got the achievement class trader. I love that he's out there. Boo boo. Zangy, come here. Zangy, hey. Come here. Want a treat? Come here. Yeah, he doesn't, he, he's, he's mad that the monkey is there. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here, it's okay, it's okay. I'll protect you from the monkey. Okay, here's a treat. Okay, I love you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He's so mad at the monkey. He hated it. He's so upset. I love you, buddy. I'll protect you, don't you worry. It's okay. It's okay, I got you. Okay? I got you, Bubba. I got you, Bubbas. Okay? You can, you can lean. No, you don't want to? You want to be your spot? Okay. Troy knows your family. He's buying pills from Blake and occasionally helping your mom with the research. Says she was conducting research at the lake. I believe him, but uh, fuck him. Not selling drugs, some shit kicker, just so he can't get it in a gas station. Dusty bags of dog food lie the shelf. Immaculately stocked cigarettes. Protein bars, bubblegum, breath mints, taffy, etc. This embodied illuminated head of the kiosk levitates silently in the browser tab. Good evening, how may I help you? You know Troy, that guy outside? Thank you for your inquiry. I'm forwarding it to Paralu, Paralu and Sons LLC. Paralu and Sons LLC has declined to respond to your inquiry. So why do you get fired? American Discount Southeast Incorporated prides itself on its outstanding mentorship and jobs training program. American Discount Southeast Incorporated works to ensure that each franchise location provides opportunities for career growth. At American Discount Southeast Incorporated franchise locations, we leverage automation and the machine learning technologies to enhance the lives of all employees. To apply for a position at any American Southeast, American Discount Southeast Incorporated franchise location, please visit American Discount SE ADSE today. You own this place. I am Discountware, a distributed cloud-based American uh, uh, blah blah. 
Just rated cloud-based operating system for American Discount Southeast Incorporated. Semantic version, sit number 16.3.3. The owner of this franchise is Paralu and Sons LLC. Discount wear is licensed to the Paralu and Sons LLC via the standard American Discount Southeast Incorporated licensing agreement. How do you like the job? I proudly perform the routine maintenance operations and procedures of 227 American Discount Southeast Incorporated franchise locations across the Southeast region. American Discount Southeast Incorporated is a model company awarded for its excellence in business and community service. Thank you for inquiring about the American Discount Southeast Incorporated. I I'm good. Was I supposed to get something from the gas station? Manual price scanner. Fuse. You grab a fuse. I detect that you've merchandise in your possession. You must remove any unpurchased items from your backpack and scan them in order to exit the store. If you use an item in your inventory, drag it from the inventory to the intended target. You scan the fuse. Thank you for your purchase. That's tour, huh? Buck. A lone horse drinks from the stagnant water pooled along the river bank. A memorial languishes in the river mud. A two and a half, two by four cross, plywood plaque, cairns of pulverized concrete, sprayed haphazardly onto the plywood as a remembrance. Here pass the brave freedom fighters of January XW11. His cries of liberty echo through the generations. In much smaller lettering, a different hand scratch fake across the bottom of the plaque. Oh, the kids are gone. You got the fuse? Good. We'll be able to use the bike to get around town until I'm done with the truck. Concerns me that Blake still hasn't gotten back. He's been spending a lot of time at Sarpy Paper Bags lately. Maybe we should look from there. Let's go. Off to Sarpy Paper Bags. Sky bleeds the color you knew as a child. Airline highway passes beneath your feet. Millions join your party. Interact with party members by clicking their portraits. If you're stuck, they might be able to help you. Million shouts over the wind. This bike runs much better now. You can use it to get around during your visit. So where could Blake be? Spends a lot of his time at Sarpy Paperbacks. Maybe you should check there. How's Blake been anyway? year that you left, you became uncontrollable. His behavior troubled Catherine deeply. He was beginning to remind her of your grandpa. After he was expelled from Destrahan, began running drugs into the parish. Made himself many enemies. Put those things behind him after her illness, but now that she's gone, I'm uncertain what to expect. This place can ruin people. Perhaps. I won't apologize for leaving. No one's asking you to, Kay. What's it been like around town? Shield's been expanding since you left. Catherine took your grandpa's boat in the lake to investigate reports of construction in the swamps along the shoreline. She assumed it to be unpermitted shield activity. She was unable to find any evidence of it. However, it was clear that she found something during the investigation. What was it? Don't know. Maybe you do? How would I know? Has Blake not mentioned anything? I never trust what he says. In any event, something drew her to the lake in months before her death. So how have you been? I'm always the same, Kay. Always the same. Is that bad or good? Whichever you prefer. Are you... depressed? No. I love you, millions. Thank you. 
Hey, babe. No. Maybe. Oh, that one, yeah. Your mom. More research. In the lake. Your mom was investigating reports of an unpermitted shield construction in the lake. While there, she saw something. But what? Mom was investigating reports of construction in the lake. She found no evidence, nor who might be behind it. Mom saw something in the lake. Man, look at this shithole. There's Sarpy. Young man leans against the station wagon while scrolling oddly on his phone, his silhouette darkened by the fluorescent glare of the payday lender sign. Yeah, this uh, this game takes place in a alternate little kind of cyberpunky Louisiana, but it definitely gets across the wretched nightmare that is poor ass Louisiana. It's like a different fucking planet. No, but you had them very recently. Oh, they might be upstairs in the little cubby. As long as there's no monkey on the screen. No, I'm good thinking. Started doing this rideshare few thing a few weeks ago. Kinda hate it. Why? It sucks, dude. Yeah, sucks. Dog. A stocky pit bull with piercing green eyes watched on the horizon with a neutral demeanor. As you reach down to pet the dog, she shows her teeth and growls. Are you okay, Paige? Two teens nod and gesture excitedly while bouncing between topics. BMX. Where'd this dog come from, bruh? Don't know. She's been sitting here for a while. You seen her eyes? Them eyes are something, bruh. I wonder how anyone could read in this dim and cluttered bookshop. As your eyes adjust, you see Blake's childhood friend Erica waiting behind the counter to greet you. Okay. A million, when did you get back to town? I've been in Norco for quite some time. Perhaps you're misremembering Erica. Weird, I guess so. Yeah, but anyway. Okay, you're looking rugged these days, old friend. That's an intense scar above your eye. Yeah, I'm a badass. You know what? I agree. Word on the street is he cleaned Troy's clock. That guy, my god, he's such a clown. Glad he finally got a little taste of what he deserves. What's the Canadian equivalent of Louisiana? It doesn't really have one. I guess Labrador, but nobody lives out there. Just doing my part for the community. Definitely. Enough about that troll. I was keeping up with your travels online, but I haven't seen you post in a while. I have so much to tell you, buddy. I can only imagine. I'd love to grab a drink and hear all about it. For what it's worth, things have been eventful around here. Floods, fires, gunfights out in the lake. Rarely a dull moment these days. And of course, your mom was always in the mix. Convinced she never slept. Be driving in late from the city and swear to God I'd see her alongside airline. She'd have a headlamp on, dredging trash out of the borrow ditch. Up until the very end, she never let her illness stop her. I'll miss the hell out of that woman. Yeah, me too. You and your brother have been living in my heart ever since I heard the news. I know you weren't always on the best terms with your mom, but she loved and admired you. She talked about you constantly. I think you used to make Blake upset. It felt like you were the favorite. He was right. <laughs> Catherine did always say you reminded her of herself, but it didn't always sound like a compliment. Have you seen Blake lately? Yeah, I saw him yesterday. He hasn't been around the house. He has not. He said he was heading to Floodgate Tavern when I saw him. May have gotten wasted. I know Gus lets him sleep behind the bar a couple times. You, did you know you were coming, Kay? You never mentioned it. Thought I'd try to surprise him. Sure, I'll be relieved to see you. he's been resisting help, but he needs it. 
If I hear from him, I'll tell him to find you. Scan the titles on the shelf. Don't be a vampire. Pick the slim shelf paperback off the shelf and flip to a random page. Another dark and lonely night spent in this cavern of despair, hidden from the blackout daylight. Blackout curtains are all that defer my eternal death. Thought being a sexy vamp vampire would be sexy, but it's not. It's awful for your skin. I look pathetic. Also, blood tastes like bong water. Didn't think it'd be like this. Good Hope Cemetery. Carbon copy of a document authored by St. Charles Parish Planning Committee. Document outlines the parish's intentions to secure a roadway through a 90 meter stretch of the shield and ductual complex. This easement would allow the descendants of those entombed to visit the Good Hope Cemetery. Grave sites are currently surrounded on all sides by the refinery. Hey, Crouton. This here's the illustrious Crouton. We found him behind the dumpster back like a cardboard. Whatever you do, don't pet him. He's a devil. I got scars all over my hands from this damn cat. I'm gonna pet him. Wow. Cosh Crouton usually bites strangers. He must like you. Seems to be getting a little excited. Wow, I've never seen a cat purr this hard. Maybe you two should slow down. No, really, stop touching the cat. Crouton looks like he's fixing to explode. Oh no! That one's really hard. To the cat. Okay, goddammit, I told you to stop fucking with the cat. Did he just launched through the ceiling? What the hell just happened? You grab the phone case from the counter. Phone case resembling crouton. I do hope Erica is correct and that Blake's absence is due to nothing more than another drunken night. My intuition leaves me with a sense that something is wrong. You feel it too, Kay. Something feels strange to you. Uh, what's happening? Several weeks ago. Greater New Orleans Neural Versioning Clinic. Brings you here tonight. I want a record for my kids. I don't want to leave my kids alone. They may still need me. I understand. You were referred by Mr. Richard? Duck. That's what everyone calls him. Yeah, Duck. We followed his branch with some interest. Who hasn't? Yeah, we'll be discussing this in more detail as things progress. For now, let's begin with a simple exercise. I'd like to talk to you about your earliest memory. It's of, uh, pine trees, yeah? That's right. Tell me about them. They grew from the concrete. Like sick flesh. Like cancer. 
It made your father upset. He'd see them and frown, but he remained silent. He'd sit quietly in the truck dissatisfied. I wouldn't say a word. Speaking in those moments made you a fool in his mind. Your father's house was suffocating. Couldn't wait to get out. And that's why you married Blue? Yeah, they have somewhere to go. Bought her a little place on Good Hope Street. The whole thing was a mistake. When I told him I didn't love him, it was in my father's voice. I told him I never loved any man. Was it true? No. That was a difficult night for you. Didn't feel real. Why? The sky was an inversion of some other sky. It was corrupted, misplaced. It wasn't a Norco sky. Or was blue? Sat out of the window all night. Is he east facing a window? Yeah. When you stood over him to apologize, you saw the flare stack of the refinery in his eye. That's right. How was it after that, in the time before he died? We circled each other in wide orbits. I'd hide at the center of the house, nursing Kay, and only leave when I heard him step out. He'd sleep on the couch or next to her crib, sing her old Cajun lullabies, bet her head, whisper to her about his life. And then there was the explosion. When the cat cracker blew, they say he fell five stories. Went to identify his body on a Thursday night. I remember the tempo of the streetlights. Police scattered across the east bank. Carried Kay in a blanket. She never cried. We were quiet, she and I. I don't believe in forgetting. Tell me about this man. I would see him from time to time around Norco. This is many years ago. But several weeks ago, Blake saw somebody passing by the house. I think it was him. Why? I just do. The robot's no longer here to deter him. Million? Yeah. Could be it. What was your first encounter with Million? Let me think. She came to me in the parking lot. Kay was about 12 years old at the time. She knew Blue from his days at the aluminum refinery. Stared for a long time into the constellation of eyes. They swirled around in a kind of desperation. I took her home knowing it was another mistake. You were reckless in those days. Welcome any trouble I could find. What's the significance of this image to you? It's... well, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. It's a sphere. It followed me in the lake when, recently, a few weeks ago. This is where Mr. Richard's branch factors into your biography. Duck's version escaped hard fork, an extremely rare instance, and grew into some kind of monster. He began speaking to me through the radio, told me to install an app. An app? Yeah. I think it has something to do with the thing, the sphere, whatever that is. So long as it pays, I don't care. I can use the money. Yet yeah, pays? Yeah. Let's see. Seems as the last control point that you submitted. Would you like to include any additional thoughts or memories? Anything not included in the intake form? No, that should be enough. I'll now begin disconnecting the sensors. Slight feeling of nausea and disorientation is normal. No cause for alarm. Thank you for your patience, Ms. Madeira. No idea what Super Duck wants from me. Better check my phone. Ma'am? I... Ma'am, are you alright? My eyes are just playing tricks on me, I guess. Vertigo and visual distortion are common side effects of versioning session. Should I contact her on-call physician? No, no, it's fine. Farewell. Last name? It's Madeira. First name, Catherine. One moment. Your head, our head drive is fully synced. You've chosen our silver tier. Product does not come pre-installed with adware blocking services and is provided as is without warranty. You're eligible for a free sync anytime before the new year. Thank you for choosing the Greater New Orleans... Neural Versioning Clinic for your cognitive versioning needs.
whack job. It says here I need to go to the Curious Duck. Interesting. Okay, I don't know. Love you. Checking in. Still in Arizona? New Max. Careful. Doesn't be safe. Call when you can. Getting worried, okay? Flake says he hasn't heard from you. Really getting concerned. Please call. Put me on another round of chemo. Would love to hear from you. Call. Where you went, Ma? I'm out. Fine. Had to drop something off at your parents. Been gone a while. I had to make a couple stops. I'm okay, I promise. Blake, you heard from your sister? Yeah, she said she's okay. Where is she? She didn't say. Dear, where'd my pills go? In a meeting. We'll call back. How'd I go this morning? We'll call. Ma came back around. I'll be home soon. Calling Uncle Chip. It's fine. Love you. Love you, sweetheart. Blake, can you hear me? Can you come to the living room, please? Something's happened out this evening. Everything's okay. You need to stay home. I'll be fine. I promise. Love you, nerd. Love you, Ma. A while, Duck. Too long, old friend. How's the weather? They had me on chemo. Terrible. Don't have long myself. Got me carrying around a tank. Blue's waiting for us. Don't have... Don't doubt that for a minute. Praise the glory of God. Something on your mind, Kate? Didn't want to raise your blood pressure. Try me. Super contacted me. So he did. Don't mess around with that shit. Where you went? Don't mess around with Super Kate. That thing's got no soul. Likes to ruin all that touches. Need the money. They don't take money where we're going. Can't leave it for the kids to clean up. Lou left them a little bit now, but uh, he went, but I was a fool. Don't worry yourself like this at the end. Find peace. No peace for me. Don't get mixed up in that thing, Kate. I'll tell you how it won't go how you want it, Kate. God damn it. Hope you're listening. Welcome to the Oxner and My Direct Medical Portal. Verification code? Yes. Service bill for $1,500 been posted. Outstanding balance of $1,500 is waiting. Bill for $1,700 has been posted. Outstanding battle balance of $3,300 is waiting. Outstanding balance of $3,333 is posted. Outstanding balance of $3,340 is posted. A bill for $12,512 has been posted. Outstanding balance of $15,853 is waiting. An outstanding balance of $15,872 is waiting. Let's get the fuck out of here. Uncanny smile, personal injury lawyer Martin Smart hangs above Interstate 10. His eternally quaffed hair clings desperately to his head. His hallmark blood red tie catches the eyes of drivers speeding east. Just a click away, the sign reads. The Interstate Expressway traces a scar down Claiborne Avenue from east to west. East. Rich cuts seats through the train, and Seventh Ward, like places whose stories should be forgotten and left behind in haste. The pillars still tell those stories beneath the interstate, east above the Industrial Canal, the moldering strip malls, the narrowed expanse of the lake, the shrimp boats, the prow of the black marble waves, east through Mississippi in the winter week night darkness, and onward to Florida where it terminates. West. West is the suburbs that Catherine calls home. West, the concrete expanse breaks clean and sharp at the St. Charles Parish line. Gives way to the cypress slums. The Tupelo crown spire... Uh, uh, spire above the overpass, silhouetted by an unnatural glow that leads to Norco. His eyes are... evil. It's taking forever to start, and I'm starving. You been to any of these yet? No, what is it? A oh, puppet show. They always start late. Told them I'd help load up the gear, so I'm stuck here till it's over. My stomach's gonna eat itself. Newly refinished Art Deco structure glows beyond the overpass. They turned Charity Hospital into art lofts. Disgusting. Makeshift puppet theater. Curtains are closed. Maybe I'll come back later to see what this is about.
let's see. How's your night, ma'am? Eh. Not great. Sorry to hear it. You wouldn't have any change to spare, would you? Not a cent. Sorry, buddy. Got nothing. Sorry. Figured. Hey, Santa. Well, ho, ho, ho. Santa's eyes rolled wildly in their deep sockets. His mouth twists into a smile. How are you, dear? Got a dollar to spare? Help spread some Christmas cheer? Where's the money go? What are you raising money for? Something very benevolent. Like a food bank, or... Yeah. Yeah, a food bank? A food bank. Veterans, animal shelter. Who cares? Just give me the dollar. It's my last one. Going back on your word, are you? Not true. I never promised you anything. You're a liar. I'm not. And a demon. Demon? Santa points his bell at Catherine in accusation. Demon! His posture relaxes abruptly. Open your heart. This is a time for giving. And that's why Mary Laveau opened a t-shirt and camera shop on Royal Street. That's not scary at all. I paid for a ghost tour. We're just going to walk around looking at t-shirt shops. I want my damn money back. This is a farce. What kind of tour guide are you? Well, technically I'm not one. But... Excuse me? My roommate is. Then where is he? Long story. I came all this way because the website said it'd be fun. I'm having an alright time. The city was supposed to be enchanting. Anyone trying to score some molly? I hate New Orleans. City Hall. Figure sits at a desk overlooking Duncan Plaza in the deepening winter night. He watches the fingers of a cool front animate the tops of oak trees in the park. This air of the evening is the driest it's been since spring. He watches the last remnants of the commuter traffic leaving Canal Street, the pulsing taillights, the shift workers running towards the bus. He watches an airplane climbing the Armstrong from Armstrong International as passengers look down upon the warm glow of the city. The oak trees, the traffic, the frail woman staring at the street, warm glow and darkness, wind from the lake. An armed security guard greets Catherine as she enters the building, sits on a wooden stool next to a walk-through metal detector. Good evening, badge please. Damn, I left it at the house. There are no council meetings scheduled for this evening. You'll need an employee ID badge to enter. There's a small plaque next to the door. It says, Curious Duck. This is the place. Door's locked. A hot dog vendor sits behind a large plastic cart. Looks up eagerly. Oh, hey, hi. He watches Catherine with a silent grin. So is this... I'm flannel ass and these. He makes a grand sweeping gesture above the pot of vague meat. Are my dumpy dogs begins to pick at the lint that peppers his jacket. Flannel ass dumpy dogs. He nods, smiles. Would you like one? Sure, what the hell. I'm dying anyway. Really? You're buying a dumpy dog? That's fantastic. That's great. Seem a bit surprised. It's just been a while since I've gotten some business. Been a little slow. Haven't ordered new dogs in a while. So these are old dogs? Nothing to worry about. They keep well. How old? Business was popping. Like I was doing really well back in YX2D. That's like nearly a decade ago, man. How would you like yours dressed? Tell you what, think I'll pass. I'll be here all night. Anything else I can help you with? Curious Duck's door is locked. What's with this shop over there? I was told to come by, but the door's locked. Curious Duck? Rosie doesn't let anyone in unless they know the secret knock. So what is it? I can't say, sorry. It's urgent, please. Well, I do need some business. 
All right, I'll buy one of those old hot dogs. You won't regret it. Doubtful, how much? Just $14. Is that a joke? Is what a joke. Christ, you take wallet transfers? Cash only. Damn, well, what if I send some business your way? Then I'll show you the knot. Fine, it's a deal. $14 for a nine-year-old hot dog, huh? Yeah, that's about right. Two oogies disregard you as they carry on. Think I'll leave Santa B. Man masquerading as a tour guide continues to lose control. City's just one big scam. Okay, well these... I'm not gonna be able to get these people to buy a hot dog. But I might be able to get hipsters! Crowds arrive to watch the show. The show is getting started. I should uh, take a seat. Deep in the cypress hollow I hide. I mourn this evening. My last child has died. They hang hooks from the trees with chicken thighs. They shoot bullets in our heads behind our eyes. It is a curse that I am the last to survive. I was once captured by a fisher fool who called me his own. He'd walk me like a dog along the stinking streets. He fed me strange plants and deli meats. He even covered me with blankets when I went to sleep. I left on the night of a monstrous flood. The fool has not rested a single night since. He stalks these bayos every night, hoping to see my eyes shine. He calls out a ridiculous name that was never mine. Tonight I will shine my eyes at him. I have a request. Kill the shrimp-catching man who killed my children. Remove his skull. Bring me his head. Do this, you may again leash me like a dog. What? Hello, Fisher Fool. You trolled this bio by you for many nights. Here I am, the one you're trying to find. A child hangs dead across the lake. Bring me the head of the shrimp catching man, the one who captures the small ones. Peel the flesh from his skull. Do this and I'll be your dog. I have a health bar? Solitary egret stands in the rush, undisturbed by the boat's wake. Alright. Okay. Long time since I've seen anyone down on this bayou. They're all too frightened anymore. Biggest alligator ever to hunt this lake. She makes her den just across the way. She took my child from me. I buried him where I found him, near where she stay. I visit that site daily, hoping I might catch her, but she knows better than show her face. Were one to cut out this big skull of hers, that'd be worth bragging on. It'd be a roadside marvel. There'd be money to make. See that rifle you're holding? What do you say? Die. That's what I say. I made the deal with the alligator first, buddy. Alligator hangs dead from a meat hook cast into the, the limb of the cypress tree. No hesitation, that's right. When I decide to murder somebody, I decide fast. Hemming and hawing is not worth it. 
You did my bidding, Fisher fool, just like an obedient dog. Each day you held me captive, my patience strained. You'll not humiliate me again. Consider this your last mistake. I've relished the horror that struck the Fisher Fool's eyes. I first took one limb but left him alive. I made him crawl like a dog before he died. Do I get money? Crowd's discussing the show. Now they're talking about performing an encore. This is taking forever. I need to find something to eat. Do you consider yourself an adventurous eater? You like to live dangerously. There's a guy selling old hot dogs up the street. Sounds like a delicacy. Always looking for ways to fortify my intestines. Really? Well then have at it. Yes. Hey, this is pretty tasty. Thanks for the wreck. Might get another one. Just wait for it, pal. Hope you know where to find a bathroom around here. Hey, thanks for sending some business my way. No problem, we had a deal. Deal? You're supposed to show me the knock. Oh, well, sorry, Rosie'd be upset. Are you kidding me? I sent you business, show me the knock, that was the deal. Well, okay, but I'll only show you once, so here, listen. It's just four fucking knocks in a row. That was the secret knock? Very secret. That's how everyone knocks. Exactly. Who would sus- If cancer, I don't have time for this. Hey, it's Crouton! That cat looks familiar. Don't touch the ball. Suppose you think you can come in here with your soft little hands and touch on my magic ball. Don't work like that, love. Now I gotta clean off the smudges. So you've been eating french fries, greasy hands. Nasty. You must be one of them super duck people. Always coming around here looking at the down of their cell phones. Greasy hands, terrible. The app said I should come here. The app. Yes, ma'am. Something not right about you. You got a drug head. I'm sorry, is this the right place? It is, butter hands. It is. Calm down, love. You made it. Dallas will tell you what's what. Go talk to Dallas. I called him when I heard you trying to break into the place. Hell of a racket you were making. Juggling on the handle like you couldn't get a hold of it. Now I see why. Dallas will be right out front. Don't got time to be babysitting you. Now that I gotta clean up all this. Stains all over my ball. You ever check your shoes before you come in? They're, they're, they're dirty. My shoes are covered in dog shit. Go, bitch. Get out of my shop, little pothead. One last thing. That gemstone you got hanging from your neck? That thing ain't real. I know. Trashy. I said I don't touch my ball, love. Oh, a jumble of Mardi Gras beads and other trinkets spill from the table. Novelty New Orleans themed t-shirts line the back wall. Overpriced selection of travel guides, cookbooks, and haunting histories of the New Orleans fills the show. Plastic simulacra of ceremonial masks hanging on the wall. Unopened merchandise boxes are pushed to every corner of the room. Mass-produced novelty voodoo dolls and tribal figurines clutter the display case. This cat looks familiar. Guessing you're Catherine? That's right. Rosie debriefed you. Was that a debriefing? I don't know if that's what I'd call it, but sure. She can be kind of, uh, 
casts the sky, gazes into the sky, and looks back to Catherine. Never mind. Quackjaw should have a ticket for the information we need. No reason to stand around. You've been on Quackjaw long. How long you been using this app? Been doing this since before there was an app. Super says use the app. I'll use the app. Makes no difference. What Super Duck? What exactly is Super Duck? It's a way of making money. Right, but it's an intelligence of some kind. I don't, I don't know its purpose. Don't know why it exists. None of that. There are nodes all over the region. Points where you can speak with Super Duck directly. These are all things Rosie should have filled you in on. Not surprised she didn't. Tell me about Rosie. What's Rosie got to do with any of this? There's a dozen or so rendezvous points in addition to the nodes. Rosie's shop is one of them. She must be making good money offering her place to the network. Probably the only she reason she... Doubt she sold merch there in years. Locks the doors to discourage customers. Guess you could call it a front. Let's go. I'm ready. Me too. Check the app and let's get moving. Only reason I ever came to the quarters for work. So what's next? Well, I'm out of the rendezvous point, so now what? Check your phone. Quack ought to have the information. How'd you get involved? This all used to happen on Craigslist. Post showing up, strange as shit. Just busy busting tables uptown. Couldn't swing rent, had a kid to feed. Started responding to the listings. First one I ever did was steal a head drive. Broke into a man's house in Orco, stole it right out of his office. Bought it to another house. People there were just like me. Just like you, how? Didn't know shit. They were there because of a post, just like me. House wasn't theirs. Nobody knew whose house it was. They plugged the head drive into a wall. They gave me some cash and I left. Receive orientation at janitorial and paper supplies in Fat City. That was not what I needed. Order a ride. Sixteen bucks? Steady beat of traffic lights along the sky across the causeway. Doors are locked. The office is closed. Galvanized steel door. The supply warehouse is half open. Oh. Erica said Blake went to Floodgate Tavern yesterday evening. Let's pass by on the way home and see what information we can gather. That threw me off real bad. Your brother is headed to Floodgate. Mention this to Erica when you drop by Sarpy. Your brother. Sprawling Shield Industrial Complex. Long ago was plantation, sheep and abundant across the Mississippi River. Refining grew in stages, slowly displacing surrounding neighborhoods. Chemical annex came online later. Children of the enslaved became the neighbors of this machine. Towers. Carbon and alloy, stainless steel. Among the columns sits a catalytic cracking unit that rocked the town. Pipelines. Web work crosses high and low, over and under traffic like water and concrete, like veins, like gossamer, like neural circuitry. 
lights. Everywhere, metal halide probing the river's expanse. <sighs> Coded patterns of warm sodium and cold LEDs. Winking. Thinking. Knowing. God, this thing is awful. Say something. Speaking. Burning eyes seeing. Something to decipher in all that Norco light. I remember blue. You only think that you do. When he died. Part of her did, too. This game is great. Go buy it. What the? Oh, this is the this is the dev. I don't know how to get out of the game. All right, I'll be honest. I'm falling asleep, like legitimately falling asleep, and I hate the reading all that dialogue is killing me. So we're gonna do a short stream tonight. Though tomorrow we're gonna do a longer one because of Kirby. Because Kirby is cool, and he will vore your dick off. So I'm gonna thank a couple people, and then I'm gonna turn in early. And, and kiss the dog and, and the cat page. I want to thank Vintage Spiffy for subbing. 13 months of Baker's Year. Thank you. Anonymous gifted a sub. Thank you. Tiz resubscribed. Thank you, Tiz. Tiz tipped $5. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sandrews sub. Thank you, Sandrews. Only one year. Seems like longer. Have a great day. Pet babies. Tell Paige she's cool. Will do. Thank you. And not soy sub. Neato. Rank RGG pro tags by how much you want to see them in fighting games. I don't want to see any of them in fighting games because they'd be in Virtua Fighter and actually they're already in Virtua Fighter and that makes me sad. Now I'm going to go be sad. Thank you. Now I'm sad. Okay, bye. <laughs>